Hey everybody, it's Sean, and I'm super excited today because I got a package from my favorite RV gadget company. That company is Techno RV. It's run by Eric and Tammy Johnson, and they are really good at the products that they sell. They only sell products that they use themselves, so they come recommended and with a lot of experience. And they'll not only help you with the purchase, they'll also help you before the purchase in selecting what you really need, as well as after the purchase with tons of instructional videos and um, questions and answers so that you can get proficient in using the products that you purchase from them. So let's see what's in the box. So what we have is a TST wireless tire pressure monitoring system with some extra uh, pressure monitors, wireless pressure monitors, because we have a triple axle fifth wheel and a dually truck. Inside the box, well, let's just open it and see what's in there. So inside this box, comes with the three and a half inch color screen, uh, six t wireless pre tire pressure monitors. It comes with a mounting kit for the dash, a 12 volt, volt USB plug, a repeater since our fifth wheel is so long for the wireless sensors to communicate with the um, monitoring screen it needs to probably have a repeater to help the relay get get from these to this so there's a nice little repeater we'll put it inside the RV and then some additional um, installation parts so why do you need a tire pressure monitoring system well Two bad things can happen if you have a tire blowout. Number one is it can do a lot of damage to your RV, whether it's a travel trailer, fifth wheel, or motorhome. And it can also cause a very bad accident, which, you know, a lot of bad stuff can happen when there's an accident. By having a tire pressure monitor, you can monitor not only the um, pressure in your tire so you can tell wh whether it's getting too low or too high and you're at risk for a blowout. This one also monitors the temperature so if it's getting too hot and um, you're at risk for a blowout the, this uh, monitor system will hopefully uh, alert you so you can stop before there's too much damage or before you have an accident. Now before we install this a couple of things you want to do is check your tires. Um, number one, check your tire for tread to make sure that you don't need to actually replace your tires before installing this system. And number two, check to make sure your tires are filled to the appropriate pressures. Now one way to find those pressures usually inside of the driver's side door of your vehicle. There will be a um, square or rectangle plate that will have the temp that will have the pressures for each of your tires. So in mine, the two front tires should be at 70 psi, and the back tires on the dually should be at 65 psi. And then you want to do the same thing for your tires on your RV, whether it's a towable or whether it's a driving RV. It, there'll be some similar information located um, with your RV or in your paperwork that you received that says the appropriate inflation pressures for the tires. So let's get them installed. So when you're ready to install the sensors, the first thing you have to do is match the sensor up to where it is, to which tire it's on. So the first thing you wanna do is turn on your display. It'll go through a little startup mode I've already got the first two tires programmed, which is why they show up, but we're going to go ahead and uh, program another one so you can see. What you want to do is hold the set button down until it beeps, 
and after it beeps you should see the screen change and it should say high pressure set. So then you would just want to use the plus button to scroll through until you see the words learn ID at the bottom. Once you see the words learn ID you press set one more time and the tire display will come up. Like I said, I've already programmed the first two, which is why they have IDs. So now I'm going to the outside passenger tire of the dually. Once you get to that tire on the display, you press set again, and the Fs will start flashing so you know you're in the right spot. Then you place the sensor next to the display and you hit go. And it will ID that sensor and place it at that tire. But you're not finished yet. You have to remember to hit the set button one more time. And it saves that code at that tire position. When you go through all of your tires and sensors and program them like this. Um, like I said, these for us would be passenger front, driver front, and then the two dually tires on each side in the back. And then this square or rectangle over here will be the, the fifth wheel. Once you're finished programming all of them, you hit the back button until you get to the main screen. So now we're ready to program the pressure parameters and you want to do this also before you install the sensors on the valve stem. So again you want to press the set button until it beeps. You want to press the plus button three times. One, two, three. And you should see set at the bottom and the bar or PSI flashing on the right hand side. Press the set button one more time and then you use the plus button and you can select PSI so it's flashing. Once you've pressed the set to lock in the PSI you press the back and go to the main screen. Back at the main screen you see that we have PSI selected there as the unit of measure and right now since we have the front two already done it's showing a reading but at this back tire it's showing zero because we haven't programmed it yet. So you hit the set button again till it beeps. Now if your pressures are lower than 100 PSI you have to set the low pressure first. So scroll to low pressure set and you hit the set button and it'll show up. So you know, I already have the front two set and the low is 65. To move to another axle you press the go button and it moves to that next axle. I want to set this 20 to 25 percent below the optimum pressure for the tire. So you can just hold down the minus button to lower it and I'm going to put this one at 60 PSI for this axle. And then you press set to lock it in place. And then we can scroll back to the high pressure setting and click set there. And we want it at, these are the front ones at 75. We press the go, and you see it's at 175. We need to bring that down to 70. And I'm just holding my finger on the minus button. And then you press set again, and that locks it in place. 
Okay, the last thing we have to do for these tires is to set the t high temperature alarm. And the manufacturer recommends setting this to 158 degrees Fahrenheit for all types of tires. So the first thing you need to do is set it to Fahrenheit instead of Celsius. And so you hold the set button down until it beeps. Then you scroll until you see the Fahrenheit and Celsius sign. Press set again. Now to select Fahrenheit, you hit the plus button. Press set again. And then go back to the main screen. So now it's showing 82 degrees Fahrenheit, 81 degrees Fahrenheit on this tire here. So you hold set again until it beeps. And you go to high temp set, press the set button, and it shows it is at 158. So we are good to go on the temperature monitoring. We just verified that it is at 158. After you've gone through all these steps, you can start putting the sensors on the valve stems. Okay, I'm going to show you how to put on the uh, cap sensor, and it requires a little tool. Um, so this is on the front tire of my truck. So you just get the cap started. Then you put the tool on, and then you twist with the tool, and you're going to start to hear air coming out of the cap, or coming out of the valve stem. Once that air stops, coming out of the valve stem, the cap will tighten up. And then you take that off, and that's as easy as it is to install these. Okay, so we have the tire pressure monitor installed, and we've been using it. It was a pretty easy installation. A couple of things I've noticed since having it in is when you get in your vehicle and start it up, and turn on the tire pressure monitoring system, it takes about 45 seconds to a minute for the um, sensors to link up with the monitor, and so you don't get your readings right away. It takes just about a minute or so to get those readings. Um, another thing is that the sensors have um, batteries in them that you can change. Um, they have the size battery in the installation book, so you can just go to the store. It's a common like watch battery, and you can switch them out. I do like that there's a pad that you can set on your dash and set the monitor in. Um, it doesn't move around at all. We have a fairly bumpy truck because it's made for towing our fifth wheel. And the display does not move when it's sitting on that pad. One thing I, w one thing I would change about the system is the um, signal extender or relay is wired as a 12 volt. I would like to see one made with a 110 volt so that it can be plugged into a regular outlet. Typically when we're driving our fifth wheel we do have some power in the system through our inverter so plugging it into an outlet would um, be okay in our case. So maybe if they had two options for that, one a 12 volt and one a 110, it would really um, help in locating that receiver or extender in as good a place as possible. I would definitely purchase one of these if you don't have one yet. It it definitely helps in monitoring the the tire pressures. It really is a small footprint in your vehicle to monitor some of the most important factors in protecting your vehicle from an accident or severe damage caused by a tire blowout. If you're interested in these, go to Techno RV, check out their learning series. They have a lot more information about the TST systems and tire pressure monitors. 
Um, they also have information on a lot of other electronic components. We hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, please click the like button and think about subscribing to our channel. And we'll see you in the next video or on the road. Until then, safe travels.